Ferrari pulls off a masterclass race, Lewis reveals main issue with the Mercedes upgrades and Lando and Max's battle raises questions at McLaren. Do consider subscribing to the channel. Let's get into the latest F1 news. Lewis Hamilton spun out of the United States Grand Prix on just the third lap, ending a difficult weekend for the seven-time F1 world champion. Having been knocked out in Q1 on Saturday, Lewis Hamilton's miserable weekend at the Circuit of the Americas ended with him in the gravel trap at turn 19. Starting the race from 17th on the grid, Hamilton opted for the hard tire for his first stint in Austin. Making a great start to end the first lap in 12th place, all the good work came undone on the third lap as Hamilton's rear got loose through the left hand turn 19. Similar to the incident in which Mercedes teammate George Russell crashed out of Q3 at the same corner, Hamilton was powerless to get the rear of the W15 back under control and ended up beached in the gravel. Despondently climbing out of the cockpit, Hamilton slowly removed his knee pads as the race was neutralized under the safety car before withdrawing behind the barriers, having apologized to his team for losing control. Lewis Hamilton explains race-ending spin in Austin, Speaking to media, including PlanetF1.com, following his retirement, Hamilton said that he wasn't even in an attacking mode when he spun off. I had a great start. I was feeling good and got to 12th, he said. The best start, really, in turn one that I've had in a long time. I wasn't even pushing at that point. I was literally just trying to get the... Starting to get going, obviously. Trying to bring the tires up to temperature. The car started bouncing. The left front started bouncing, and the rear end just came around, the same as George yesterday. In FP1, I had the same thing. I had the spin in turn three, which is so rare, like I've never spun in turn three in all the years that I've been here, and I've never spun there before either. So, as I say, George obviously had the same problem yesterday, and he's gone back to the old spec car, and he's looking good out there. So maybe there's something with our new upgrade. We'll investigate as much as we can. After today, we'll get the data. Lewis Hamilton Something wasn't quite right with the car. Even if Hamilton had managed to stay facing the right way in that specific incident, Hamilton said he reckoned a spin was inevitable given the handling he was experiencing. If I didn't have this bouncing stuff, I think, if it didn't happen that lap, it would have happened another lap coming up, he said. Because something wasn't quite right there with the car, and it's been the same most of the weekend with this new package we have. So yeah, it's obviously devastating, but it is what it is. We'll get the data from today, and we'll find out whether or not we're going to be on the older new spec next week. McLaren's Andrea Stella was not impressed with the FIA stewards for awarding Lando Norris a five-second time penalty. Norris was given a five-second time penalty for leaving the track and gaining the advantage after overtaking Max Verstappen off the track in the final laps at the Circuit of the Americas. While Norris's penalty was inarguable as an overtake off track, the difficulty for the stewards was in deciding which overtake opportunities and incidents through the race warranted penalty or not, with drivers being able to crowd their rivals out due to the tarmac escape areas. Pierre Gasly was also given a penalty for overtaking off the track, while George Russell was given a penalty for forcing another driver off the track in a similar incident to Verstappen's incident with Norris. On the first lap, Verstappen also crowded Norris out on the exit of Turn 1, an incident which the stewards opted against taking any further action against. With Norris losing out to Verstappen in the final classification as a result of the five-second penalty awarded to him for overtaking Verstappen off-track, McLaren team boss Andrea Stella was none too impressed as he spoke to Sky F1. My view is that the way the stewards interfered with a beautiful piece of motorsport was inappropriate, because both cars went off-track, so both cars gained an advantage, he said. It's a shame because it cost us a podium. It cost us a race where we stayed patient after we were pushed off on the first lap at the first corner. We accepted it, having said very clearly our position. This kind of decision by the stewards cannot be appealed. For us, the chapter is now closed and we move on to the next race. Asked whether the thought had crossed McLaren's mind to instruct Norris to give back the place and attack the Dutch driver again, Stella said, we double-checked that both cars went off track, so for us, there was no doubt that the maneuver was correct. Speaking to Sky F1 immediately after the race, Norris opted against digging in the boot on his championship rival, but said it was clear Verstappen had both overtaken and defending by going off track during the race. I need to go look at it again. I was pretty tight, obviously. Max went for a tight gap, he said. From inside the car, it's obviously hard to say on some things. He obviously committed quite a bit, which he's got the right to do. 
But again, he went completely off the track. So, I don't know. I need to look back at it. At the same point, he's overtaking by going off track. So I don't know what I've got to do. He defends by going off track. He overtakes by going off track. But I'm not going to complain about it. I think Max drove well, he defended well, and we had a good race together. But the rules are the rules. Charles Leclerc headed a dominant Ferrari 1-2 in Austin, while Max Verstappen made the podium after FIA intervention. Ferrari were in a league of their own, while Lando Norris thought he had completed the podium, only for the stewards to dock him five seconds for passing Verstappen off the track, meaning Verstappen clinched P3. Verstappen declared it like old times after his comfortable sprint victory, but now it was time for the main event. Having started the sprint from pole, Verstappen had to make do with a front row start for the US Grand Prix, with title rival Lando Norris on pole. The mediums were the starting compound of choice for most on the grid, while Lance Stroll, Franco Colapinto, Liam Lawson, Lewis Hamilton, and his Mercedes teammate George Russell, starting from the pit lane, were on hard tires. Norris and Verstappen both got away well, but as Verstappen looked to squeeze his way through down the inside at turn one, both drivers ended up wide at the exit as Ferrari's Charles Leclerc swept through to lead the United States GP. Hamilton was already up from P18 to P12. Carlos Sainz and the sister Ferrari muscled his way into the podium places ahead of Norris. Esteban Ocon, meanwhile, got himself into a spin with the help of Alex Albon at T1 and was running P20 in last. But Hamilton's USGP charge made it to lap three, only as the five-time winner at Cotta got beached in the turn 19 gravel, the scene of Russell's Q3 crash. With Hamilton's W15 stranded after running out of grip, out came the safety car for what is a rare appearance these days. Norris took the opportunity to express his frustrations over the radio about that Verstappen encounter at the start. He clearly pushed me off, Norris suggested. He had no intention to make the corner, and he himself went off the track. It was a short SC period with the race resuming at the end of lap five, Verstappen telegraphing Leclerc's restart tactic, but no opening for the pass at turn one presented itself. Leclerc would soon escape DRS range for Verstappen, who in turn had a plus second buffer over Sainz, who was experiencing a lack of power out of the exits and smelling fuel. Norris was closing in. Stroll, meanwhile, was noted for leaving the track and potentially gaining an advantage at turn 15, which soon was followed by a no further action confirmation. Chu Guanyu would undo his progress by spinning at turn one and dropping to P19 and last. Lap 11 arrived and Ferrari believed a fix was there for Sainz, his pace suggesting the same, with Norris having fallen over two seconds behind. Oscar Piastri was also having a tough time making progress in the sister McLaren. He was 1.7s behind Norris and calling Plan A ambitious. Leclerc was wanting Plan B or C as Ferrari opened up Plan A should he keep this pace up. He was now five and a half seconds clear of Verstappen, who was forewarned that Red Bull had spotted an issue that needed to be fixed at his pit stop. Russell, now up to P12, was given a five-second penalty for forcing Valtteri Bottas off the track. What? Russell replied, Mercedes boss Toto Wolff calling the penalty a total joke. Leclerc continued to control proceedings out front. As lap 20 arrived, he was eight seconds clear of Verstappen, who was at risk of being undercut by Sainz, especially considering that warning of an issue that needed sorting at Verstappen's stop. Sainz was in on lap 22 for a set of hards. McLaren were hoping to extend Norris's opening stint having seen that his tire deg was lower than Verstappen's and Leclerc's as Leclerc came over the radio to warn Ferrari against a similar approach, making it clear he did not want the pressure from going long. Leclerc urged Ferrari, focus on plan C, as he was asked how many more laps at this pace he believed were in those mediums. Verstappen was suffering with the front and rear left tires. Verstappen was in on lap 26, a 2.7 second stop for hards, as Sainz sailed through to make a net 1-2 for Ferrari. So, on the mediums, Ferrari shown, but would that remain the case on the hards? Leclerc was in for hard tires on the following lap, retaining comfortable track position over his teammate and Verstappen. Ferrari were telling Sainz more phase one brake release, though he broke the news in reply that he had no idea what that meant. Norris, meanwhile, was told this was the Germany situation, McLaren not wanting to pull the trigger too soon as every lap is tire delta. Leclerc was coming as he cleared Piastri at turn 12. 
Pierre Gasly was shown the black and white flag for track limits. One more breach would mean a five-second time penalty, and Norris was in on lap 32 for hards, McLaren hoping the extra tire life could give them a shot at Sainz and Verstappen. Piastri had a set of hards fitted on the next lap as Ferrari's 1-2 in the order became official, while Gasly was hit with a five-second penalty, but for leaving the track and gaining an advantage when battling Yuki Tsunoda. Verstappen was not having much more joy on the hard tires, claiming he couldn't brake or attack anything. Tsunoda also was not in the best of moods having been undercut by teammate Liam Lawson, asking how this happened over the radio with Lawson now sitting pretty on the mediums. Spinning at turn one did little to cheer Tsunoda up, while Norris was now right on Verstappen's tail for the final podium place, a battle potentially crucial with the world championship in mind. Norris was having looks at turn 12, 15, and 16, but expert car placement from Verstappen was keeping his rival at bay. Thrilling stuff with five laps to go. Lap 52 and Norris got his best chance yet, taking the outside line into turn 12 as Verstappen ushered himself and Norris off the track, but Norris returned in P3 as Verstappen complained that Norris completed that pass off the circuit. Verstappen wanted P3 back, McLaren were saying Norris was ahead at the apex. The stewards noted that incident and soon confirmed an investigation, with Red Bull also complaining about Norris moving under braking when they got to turn one. For Ferrari, it remained smooth sailing, as Leclerc raced to his third win of the season, followed across the line by teammate Sainz, Ferrari's first 1-2 of the season, and a very timely one in the battle for the Constructors' Championship. Norris received a five-second penalty, leaving him with 1.5s needed over Verstappen to negate that. He could not do it, as Verstappen took the final podium spot. Alpine team principal Oliver Oakes confirmed the team will look to announce its F1 2026 power unit partners before the end of the year. Alpine will be moving from a factory Renault power unit to becoming a customer team once Formula One's regulation changes take effect, with staff at its Viry Chatillon engine base moving to other projects after work on its 2026 engine had already begun. Alpine will have several options from which to choose for a customer power unit deal, though those involved in the Renault engine project at Viri spoke publicly of their vehement opposition to the change of direction from Alpine's perspective. Mercedes are the rumored favorites to take on a customer partnership moving forward, though Ferrari, Red Bull Ford powertrains, Honda, and newcomers Audi will also be involved in the sport from 2026 onwards. Oakes, who joined Alpine as team principal over the summer, hinted that no decision has yet been made on what direction the team will be taking, but an announcement will be due by the end of 2024. Yeah, I think it's been slightly warm since I arrived, Oakes joked to media, including Planet F1. Com in Austin when asked if his arrival at Alpine had been a baptism of fire for him. I think at the end of the day, at group level, we've made it clear that we want to have the best engine in the car, and I think that's a process that's ongoing. We're looking at options, and I think when we have news, we'll let you know. When pressed on a timescale, the new team principal added, Before the end of the year, is that all right? Alpine currently sit ninth in the constructors' standings this season, with Williams having overtaken them in recent races in what has been a difficult year overall to date. Oakes remains encouraged for the future, however, based on what he has seen so far from his short stint as team principal to date. I think we had definitely a tricky couple of races. I think particularly pre-shutdown in Spa and Zonvoort, we were there mixing it for the tail end of the points, he said. I think the last few races have been tough on the team, quite humbling, but I think this weekend we're positive. We've brought a very big upgrade. We have to see how it performs on track, Pierre. Gasly seemed happy. I'd never say completely happy. Drivers are always on our case for many things, but it looks positive. Sky F1's Ted Kravitz revealed Mercedes team principal Toto Wolf turned down an interview with him after qualifying in Austin on Saturday, with the team enduring a disappointment of a session overall. Lewis Hamilton qualified 19th for the United States Grand Prix, set to become 18th once Liam Lawson's grid penalties are applied, while George Russell placed his Mercedes 6th on the grid, but crashed out late in Q3 after an accident at the fast left-hander of Turn 19. Mercedes had brought what is set to be their final large upgrade package of the F1 2024 season to Austin this weekend, with the team looking to put themselves back in winning contention for the final races. Having finished 5th and 6th in the earlier sprint, Mercedes had been looking to back that up with a solid showing in qualifying, but while Russell made it to Q3 prior to his crash, it was the first time Hamilton in particular had qualified on the last row of the grid since back in 2017. 
Wolf is often seen interviewed on Sky F1 to give his reaction to qualifying, but Kravitz explained that, on this occasion, the Mercedes team principal opted against doing so. For Lewis Hamilton, what a disappointment, Kravitz said of Mercedes's session on Ted's notebook on Sky F1. 19th he qualified, but it will be 18th unless he decides to start from the pit lane, and he was not happy with the car. Made a mistake at turn 12 and lost half a second and didn't make it out of Q1. It's that simple. So they both didn't make it easy for themselves by languishing P17 and P18 until the last runs in Q1, then only had one chance. George got through, but Lewis was really nowhere near after that mistake. Six tenths of a second off George Russell and out in Q1. Bit of a shocker. Then Lewis said, What happened to this car, guys? George completely agreed. I don't know where what we're missing since yesterday. They gave it one more go. George got into Q3, gave it one more go from sixth on the grid, and then crashed. And Toto Wolf is as miffed tonight, or was as miffed tonight after qualifying as I've ever seen him, declined the opportunity to do an interview with yours truly, and just wants to sort of lick his wounds. Listen, it's only motor racing, Toto, you know, don't worry about it. The race is tomorrow, but sixth on the grid and a crashed car with lots of work for the mechanics to do tomorrow morning, Sunday. And Lewis Hamilton starting 18th is not what they came to a big race like Austin, Texas to do, obviously speaking. So that's a disappointment from Mercedes. Fernando Alonso explained why he cut in front of Liam Lawson in qualifying in Austin, with the V-Carb driver having said the two-time world champion said he would screw me after their heated on-track battle in the earlier sprint. Aston Martin driver Alonso had dubbed Lawson such an idiot over team radio for how he defended against him during the 19-lap race on Saturday, with the two subsequently seen in discussions in Parc Ferme. In Q1, Alonso was seen following Lawson out of the pit exit, and the two-time world champion nipped in front of him heading up to turn one, to move ahead of him in the queue. Lawson believed such a move may have been telegraphed on his part, telling his race engineer that he's doing exactly what he said he would do, and that Alonso kept his word after saying he would screw me after their battle became heated in Saturday's sprint. Lawson added to media, including PlanetF1.com afterwards, He was really upset. I'm not sure why. We were racing for P16, and I don't know why he was he so upset. It is what it is. Hopefully he can get over it. I understand he had a pretty horrible race, so I can understand why he's upset, but if I did anything wrong, I would have got a penalty. Alonso, meanwhile, did not say his move in qualifying was in response to Lawson's defending, but rather that he needed to get a timed lap on the board while on a set of used tires. When asked why he moved ahead of Lawson on the pit exit in Q1, Alonso explained to media, including PlanetF1.com, after the session, Well, because I had the scrubbed set of tires, I was not really into a timed lap, so I didn't want to lose more time, and I think it didn't change too much to him. But yeah, today in the sprint, I think he fought very hard, in my opinion, for 16th, 17th, but nothing we can do. And as long as one of the two cars lift off, there is never an accident. So it was my case today. When asked about Lawson's words and if he was trying to screw him during qualifying, Alonso replied, No, not really. But, you know, everyone on track is behaving as he wants, and for me today, it was unnecessary. Everyone can have different opinions. I'm okay with that, and it's 24 races, so you meet somewhere in the journey. Pressed further about what he specifically did not like about Lawson's defending, Alonso said he did not want to make too big a deal out of the incident, but explained, I think on the straight, I think we nearly crashed, like I did with Lance Stroll two years ago at 300-something kilometers per hour. And then the way he squeezed out of the corners, you know, to the track limits itself, you know, in lap one out of turn 11. But as I said... I don't want to make a big thing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around.